Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Good Errol Games, the place where I love to give you two player insights into some great games for game night. So today we're doing a Kickstarter preview for World Stitchers and if you're a fan of tile laying games, well then you're going to want to hear my five things you need to know about it. World Stitchers is a game in which you play as young nature spirits who are plucking pieces from the sky and stitching a world together. On your turn you play tiles, connecting terrain types to create energy. Then you may move and collect energy for as far as your matching stamina tiles allow. You can buy pillars for victory points and having 3 of those or 40 energy stored ends the game. Plus there are plenty of variants to try out too. How will you approach this energy puzzle? Thing 1, what's this game all about? So at its heart, World Stitchers really is an abstract game, but it does kind of have a setting and a theme going on here in which you're playing as nature spirits who are trying to kind of stitch the world back together by grabbing pieces of it out of the sky and connecting up similar terrain types so that you can gather energy. Um, I actually quite like this idea of stitching the world back together um, and it does make for kind of an interesting group activity as well. I think the theme fits gameplay kind of nicely. Now definitely theme is not the game's strong suit, that's not why you're here. Um, but I do like that it adds an element of whimsy to the game. You can kind of see this in the kind of the cutesy animals and the, the colourful tiles and things like that. Um, but overall, yeah, theme's not a big part. Now, similar titles to this. Well, there's lots of tile in games to choose from, um, but I'll go with King Domino in this instance. Um, but there is something kind of unique about World Stitchers, um, namely the fact that the tiles are such an unusual shape. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So at its core, World Stitchers is a tile laying game, but it's also heavily focused on resource management. Um, and this is energy. It kind of fuels everything you do in the game. So I'm going to start at the end in explaining it, which is that the game will end when someone either has 40 energy or someone has three spires. And spires are kind of victory point items you can buy using energy, right? So you can see this energy stuff is pretty important. And the big question is, well, how do I get it? So on your turn, you're able to place a tile from a face up tableau out onto the board and it's made of a bunch of connected tiles already. And for each um, terrain type that you can match, you get to add an energy token. And this doesn't just count the tile you place originally, it counts everything that's connected that's of the same type. So you can really fill out the board if you build things well. Um, so that's pretty exciting. But the thing is, okay, you've got this energy on the board, but you also need to be able to collect it. So there's a move action for that. But this isn't straightforward either. Um, there's only, you, you are limited in how much movement you can do by your stamina. And this is represented in a kind of a number of tiles you have in your hand. Um, and you're allowed to move as far as you have individual tiles, but you also have to adhere to kind of the terrain type rules as well. The good news is you can buy additional stamina tiles, but that costs energy. So the crux of the game often comes down to, you know, do I want to put out more energy and collect less? Or do I want to not put out energy and allow myself to be able to move further? And those are the decisions only you can decide. Um, at the end of the game, there's plenty of things that are worth points, the energy you've collected and things like that. So just because you end the game first doesn't necessarily mean you're the winner. Um, but overall, this is a really well thought out um, and slightly infuriating game at times. Those polyonimo tiles really are something devious. Um, but there's plenty going on here to make this feel like a fairly fresh and interesting tile laying game. Thing three on the table. So when this game is all set up, it actually is kind of pleasant to look at. And I think a large portion of that is in a tribute to those kind of energy tokens all out on the board. Now I have a prototype version, so I have these kind of nice beads and I think it gave something very tactile to the game and gave it kind of a 3D element that I really appreciated. But I can't um, assure you that this will be the case in the, the final version, but I, I liked what I had. Um, it kind of doesn't take up much space on the table, which I think is a positive, and it's quick to set up and to tear down as well. 
For two of us, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And the rule book was pretty good. We had no questions, learned how to play nice and easily. Now, replayability wise, well, I can't help but feel like tile laying games kind of have an edge here because they're always a little bit different. Um, what's nice about this game, however, is the fact it comes with a number of additional modules and these allow you to kind of alter the way that you play the game, maybe giving you powers, allowing you to have little goals and things like that. And I appreciate the fact that these are there because it allows you to make the game as complex or as simple or as involved as you would like. You could play with one, you can play with none, you can play with all of them. Um, and I really like that idea of mixing and matching. Um, I know when I play the game, I like adding the extra. Um, so I think that gives you plenty of room here to manoeuvre and set the game up in all sorts of different ways you might enjoy. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? Well, neon prototype signs because this isn't the finished product, right? But I'm going to talk about what I do have, I do have here regardless. Um, so let's look at the box art. Um, I have to say it's kind of cutesy. Um, it definitely would kind of draw you in a bit or at least wonder what it was. And those little characters are nice to see in the game, but only kind of as your player meeple. Um, the art on the Spire cards is particularly lovely and I wish I had seen more of that, in particular on the game board tiles themselves because they're really the main part of the game. I would have liked for them to be a little bit special, I suppose. Um, overall, though, everything here is nicely put together. It's well built. Um, what is here is lovely. I just wish there was more of it. Thing five, is this game actually any good? Well, I'm going to put you straight out of your misery here, folks. I had a fantastic time with World Stitchers. When we live in a world where there have been numerous, absolutely excellent tile laying games in the past number of years, I wasn't really sure what else could be done in that kind of design space. I guess I'm just kind of jaded about it. And I think that's what really surprised me with World Stitchers because it really is quite different. Um, and also I really, really liked it. So, you know, it's a, it's a quick game to play. It was easy to teach. It was easy to set up. Um, it was fun and it's simple. It's a really basic concept, which is put out energy, reclaim the energy. Um, but the problem, of course, is interacting on this group board that you have together. So there's a good bit of interactivity going on because you know, everything is shared. So you can put out energy and someone else can come and take it. You can also place your meeple in a spot that would hinder someone else being able to place energy. There's all this going on. And then of course it comes down to the real decision of, do I want to try and collect the energy or do I want to make it so I can collect more energy next turn? Um, and that really is the crux of the game right there. Um, and it's a puzzle I really, really appreciated. Not to mention the fact there are all these cool modules as well, which I, I liked a lot. Um, because you might think maybe that the game was a little basic on its own, but having all these extra additions give you, gives you kind of room to expand and try new things, all at your own pace. Um, yeah, I, I thought they were great. My only gripe here, and I'm not even sure if it's a gripe because I'm still kind of on the fence about this, is the shape of the tiles. Um, I don't know whether they were just really infuriating or entirely genius. Um, because there are times when it's difficult to figure out how your tiles actually line up on the board when you're placing in a new one and trying to connect them correctly. You can only rotate them, they don't flip over, so that added another level of pain to my spatial relations. Um, but either way, I think, I don't know if you'll either love or hate them, they're certainly different. Um, and I think, I think maybe that's the ingenious part of it. You're forced to keep on your toes when it comes to your tiles because they are just this unusual shape. Um, but yeah, overall, I really had a good time with this. I think if you like tile laying games and you want something a bit different, you should definitely check it out. And I swear that my opinion on this video was not influenced by that beautiful owl meeple. Do I think you should have world stitchers in your collection? I think if you're looking for an inventive tile laying game that's quick and fun with a bit of strategy, then you absolutely should go and look this one up. You've been watching Good Owl Games. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you have any comments or queries you'd like to make about World Stitchers, please shout them off in the comment box below. So tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.